Hey there, and welcome to Guild Wars 2 with Far Far Games Not Found. I'm Darth here. And I'm Lynch Money. And we're just going to be showing a little bit of uh, Silvari footage from the beta this weekend. Well, he's going to be showing me because I have held off from learning anything about this game. I want to play it when it comes <laughs> out. But he's going to show me around some of the Silvari starting area, show me some yeah. of the features to look forward to in the yes, game. Yes, I am. Just currently looking at. Uh, couple of possible uh, character options for Silvari looking through the classes. So I understand uh, in this game every race can be every class. Yes, that's correct. So uh, five races, this is this is one of them, this is the Silvari. I'll probably make some uh, videos about the other races, especially Azura, because I know a lot of people wanted to see them. They've not been in any of the beta weekends yet so far. Yeah, so these and these are the two that haven't been in any of the beta yeah. so far. They've been locked off until now. You've been able to yeah. do demos as them I believe. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, so yeah, I've chosen to do a uh, Silvari Mesmer for for this first video. It's mesmerizing. And we're just going to see a bit of the character creation here. What you can what you can sort of do to a Silvari. It looks quite in depth. So so far you can change physique. What's that? There's, Clothes, there's quite a lot of options. Details. Yeah. That's a lot of options. Yeah, there really are a lot of options. Um, you should make that one. He looks a bit like an alien. <laughs> I think I just um, I picked a fairly a fairly normalish looking one film. Standard, standard sort of average human type build. And uh, here I'm changing skin colour, but I actually can't really tell what I'm doing, or skin pattern rather. So I just you press that button and you can hide armour, which uh, is useful. And you use that to hide the lighting. Why would you want to hide the lighting? Um, Silvari, well, you can actually do it on all characters, but Silvari especially, you can oh. see there, look, they sort of glow in the dark, um, which is very cool. I do like that. Are there yeah. any other classes that you know of that have any sort of special effect during the day and night at all? Not that I've seen. Um, I d not as far as I'm aware. I don't think so. I think it's just the, the, the Silvari. They, they basically glow at night, which so is, is their thing. This is their thing, yeah. So this game, does it have like a common day and night cycle, or just some areas always dark? And some always no, light? no. It has a day night cycle, uh, which I can't remember the exact duration, but it's it's quite a quick day night cycle. It's it's within an hour, I think. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna see it during gameplay. Yeah, it's yeah, not gonna be one of them things where you come on it's night and then leave it still night. You no, see no, it, it, it definitely changes. Yeah, that's good. Sounds awesome. So I like that. That's quite cool. You've got like red vines, well, red yeah, roots yeah. growing up the chest. And then you've got the hair. The hair is uh, it's all made out of sort of leaves, which is quite cool. Or just general plant. That's growth, really cool. Head. I do I do like that. So you're kind of going for like an autumn looking kind of guy at the moment by the looks of it. Okay. You're, you're definitely from the autumn season of the sort month. Of. That, that reminds me of a character from Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else we got here? Oh, uh, oh, I yeah, want... Check it out. Check I that, want that in my that life. It is, it is pretty awesome, isn't it? But I think I go for, I go for something fairly uh, normal. So, okay. talk me through the survival race. What, what are they? They, they are because they are obviously humanoid, which most races in this game seem to be. But yeah, they're basically um, a, they're a pl obviously as you can probably tell they're a plant race. Um, they're quite a new race. They've only they only emerged. I think it's around twenty five years ago in the law supposedly, and they have sort of grown and aw awoken in a forest. Um, and, and all the other scary. races are a bit confused about that, yeah. These, these face options are very dramatic face options. You've got some little antenna on that one. It's almost as if it's like a single player RPG quality of character creation. It really know? is, yeah. It's, it's really in depth. It's quite surprising. I do like that beard and how it's roots. That's really cool. Yeah. You've got some little. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're 25 years old, they've just come out of nowhere. Does anyone, do they know their own history? Do they know how they happened to come to life? Or I d Not that I'm aware of. I, d I don't think so. No, they, they have, but they sort of experience a life in sort of a dream state while they're in, essentially while they're in, they're in like these pods, and then they sort of wake up from this dream state. So they, they emerge like fully adult from the, this, this oh, cool. dream. Oh, cool. So. So the twenty, so the ones that are twenty five now aren't weren't didn't come as kids and like had to grow and fend for themselves. They be, they were adults. They arrived. Yeah, as they just sort of arrived. Oh, that's that, away. I like that. That's quite, that's kind of cool. So 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 tell me through a bit of Mesmer and the classes. What 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 have you got? Right, Mesmer is 
It's an illusion-based mage class. Um, is is essentially what it is. Um, they can fight in quite a variety of ways. To be honest, um, you can do melee or ranged and casting spells or just hitting things. But the main feature of them is um, summoning illusions, which are like clones of yourself. Um, cool. So do, do they do damage, or are they just the, there yes, to distract? Yes, because they do a ver variety of things. To be honest, some are just for distraction. Some are, some. Um, like get the attention of, of enemies, um, some just attack, do damage, um, cast buffs, cast debuffs. Uh, very so quite, quite a very broad. Yeah, there's quite a very. I mean, as I'll sort of talk about a bit later on as well. Different, you get different weapons and you get different abilities. So you've got quite a lot of abilities, and and through that you can have quite a lot of different types of of clones available to you. Cool. So I see you changing the colour of your armour now. No. Yeah. This armour, I'm guessing, is what you're going to look like later again. This isn't going to be what you're starting. No. It's quite this, fancy. this this armour that you see here is actually um, your starting armour. Wow. That's uh, really which is fancy actually for it is armor. it is pretty fancy. Yeah. Um, what you you basically do with with this colour system is you pick a sort of base set of of colours for yourself, and whenever you whenever you get a new piece of item of, of armour, it will change to match the, the colour color scheme that you've already put in place. So you'll sort of always match and you and you can change that colour scheme. Oh cool, at so any instead time of having to spend loads of money on dyes every time you get a new piece of armour, you just it just yeah, does yeah. it for you. Like in games like, like Rift or I think I think you could do it in, in Terror as well and, and a few other MMOs, um you, you you're able to sort of buy dyes from like a vendor or somewhere and change yeah, the colour but in fact, I think in Rift there was a class that made dyes. Okay. Yeah. Um but in, in this game it, it's just sort of a free option. It's just always available, so you're never gonna uh, cool, you're you? never gonna have that annoying pair of bright blue gloves that, that don't match your your red outfit or anything. Oh so. man! <laughs> you can make them. Not My guy's gonna you possibly like. look quite sensible then. You don't have to. You can you can you can colour it however you want. Oh, what what's with the mask? The mask. This is a mesmer feature. Um, they all start wearing basically one of these masks. Um, do you do anything? It, it's it's not not really. It's it's bas it's just a basic helmet. Um, in terms of items, but as you see here, what we're doing now, if you've completed the character creation for the physical appearance, you now select, the, like choose the background of your character. And so you're making your story. There are quite a few options, yeah, and there's quite a few options. Um, if you can see down the bottom of the screen, on page six out of ten at the moment, so there are quite a few options to choose from. Um. For instance, in the dream of a quest that calls me to, call it was a vision of. So you you just sort of pick these. You can you can read about them. There's, there's descriptions at the bottom. So how much does um, this change your character? Is it just completely cosmetic? It changes. Or? No, no. This is this these options here will change um, the story of your character. Um, as, as you sort of level through through Guild Wars Two, you follow a story quest which tells. Basically, it's, it, it is essentially like like a, almost like a single player RPG type game um, okay, so it's kind type of story. So you've got, um, so you've got a letter here. It just oh, that's cool. So all the yeah, all this, the things you've this letter here is is obviously um, describing what you've picked. It's it's um, yeah, it's it's the, the introduction to your story essentially. And now what we get is we get an introduction video. Um, these are different for every race, um, slightly different based on class, and they also change based on your I choice of background options. Twenty-five years ago, what we'll do is we'll we'll be quiet during yeah. this. We'll shut up for a minute and can um, watch it. And if you don't want to watch it, we'll include annotation which will let you skip past it. The dream contains my great.
This is my story. So, and there we go. That is the basic introduction. Like I said, there's a, a couple of things that would change. Um, yeah, I saw in there there was mentioned the Green Knight, which you picked as your thing. Mm. I'm guessing that maybe changed the stag yes, if you yeah. picked the stag. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I've only made this one character, so I can't say, for example, how much that's changed. But anyway, I've just uh, just gone into the game here, just having a little run around. Um, as you see, just looking at the animations, the jumping, the rolling, the running. It's all, it's all very, very smooth. smooth. It's really nice. And just the general visuals. Of what is that? The game is really nice. Some sort of uh, spectral creature. Uh, not sure so there seems to be a lot of life that's come with them, they're not just plants like loads of life's come to. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of other similar life forms. Um, you'll see rangers running around with, with um, sort of like wolves that are also plants and things in, in a similar vein. And here doing a bit of this uh, bit of basic combat for uh, the first event you come across as a Sylvari. Um, I'm currently trying to defend an NPC who's going to repair a bridge for us uh, so that we can continue on. So do you have any clones by this point? Can you summon people to fight um, alongside yes, you? Yes, yeah. Um, my number one ability, which is the only ability I have at the moment, I'm currently using a scepter by the way that is, it's, it's a sort of medium range spellcaster type weapon. Um, and as you see, I just unlocked another ability. How that works is you have, as you start, when you pick up a weapon, all weapons have a different set of, of skills associated with them, and as you use the weapon more, you will unlock more abilities with that weapon. So, I, I've just killed a, a few wolves there as, uh, with my scepter, and I've now unlocked another ability at number two. Um, I think the number two ability with the scepter was a block ability. Um, cool. So. Have we jumped forward now? Or is it the same? This, this is we've jumped, we've jumped forward a little bit. This is um, I was, just, I was just running through the forest a little bit. I've killed a couple more. As you can see, I've just unlocked my third ability there as well. Um, so you, you get you get five abilities per weapon, or is that? It, it's what you, it's three for a main hand weapon, and then and then your number four and five will be your off hand weapon. Um, but if you use a two handed weapon, it'll be all five. What we've got here is we've got um, a larger event. Uh, as you see, I was killing wolves, and there was a progress bar for that. And now that's complete, and, and we have this, which is I want to very say a turtle, interesting looking. Well, it weird. Wow. Supposedly a form of plant life dragon thing. I mean, it's very, that? it's very unique. I've never seen anything it is, like it in a game before. It's Shadow of the Dragon. And um, as you can see, we've got in the top right there, we've got an event uh, tracker for for this having appeared. So it's going to be quite common fighting massive dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be like, quite rare. Well, th things this large, you don't, know, you know, you're not going to run into one every five minutes. But yeah, they're they are they are regularly around um, in every zone, right from low levels and. You, you'll quite often see, as you can see at the moment, there's quite a few players dotting around. Um, you know, you've no need to be to be grouped up or, or, or in, in a raid group like perhaps you might find in other games. You just everyone just sort of so you all get put in the group. You don't have to have made a group sort not, of got no, in not necessarily. No, you're not necessarily in a group. It's, it's simply anyone who contributes to the fight in, in oh, so enough of a way will gain a benefit. If you have a lesser contribution, um, you can get a lower contribution like score for that thing. So, that, so me. where are we now? Like right, where we now are now is we just finished that event and we, we're now Welcome in the main starting the area Never for the Sylvara. This person is a is a scout. What the scouts do is they basically will reveal a bit of the map for you and just sort of show you where there are things that need doing. Um, are these waypoints it's showing you now? Essentially, these what these are these these little hearts on the map are tasks that you can do. So you can you will go if you go to a heart, there'll be one of these hearts on the map. There will be a person around there. Here we are. I've jumped forwards to one now. Um, and essentially, you do things. It'll, it'll there'll be a little description. You look in the top right. It's a little description of what you can do, and, you, and you'll help this person out in in a certain way. It might be killing various things. Might include um, 
all, all sorts of things to be honest um, you know there was, there was I've, I remember once from the human area where you uh, just help out with simple farm work things like that um, oh so they're like they're, well I wouldn't say mundane but they're like small tasks that you can do side quests get you some experience yeah, yeah. to but keep you, you leveled between those big quests yeah yeah I mean you've got your main story quest but uh, your main story quest you'll do a part of it and then there'll be a level gap Maybe only one or two levels, but that's one or two levels is quite a it's a surprisingly large jump in terms of difficulty in this game. Yeah. So you'll have to go do a bit of other stuff in between, and and just helping people out like this is part of that. And what we see here now is while I was doing this task for someone, a dynamic event has started, and essentially um, a, a a horde of undead has started attacking. There are waves, as you can see, waves being tracked in the top right corner there, and that under that orange title and so we are trying to defend this little settlement from some oncoming waves of enemies that have just sort of come out of nowhere and and this this sort of thing is extremely common um, you get these all the time they're great source of experience and they just they just look really fun. they just they're just fun and they just make make the game more interesting um, I mean you could be leveling you know your fifth Sylvari and suddenly an event comes that you've never seen before and it's a new experience. It just, it just mixes um, it up, makes the levelling experience absolutely, more dynamic, yeah. which is what they're going for from what I can understand this game. Yeah, I've, they just really want everything to just be dynamic, just be a bit more fun than, than, than anything other people have seen before. I can, def I can definitely say it. it looks like you didn't accept the quest. I haven't seen a single person with an exclamation mark above their head. This just happened. No, you, just, you, you, you just go up, you just join in. You get involved. So long as you, so long as you contribute to what's going on, you'll get rewards for the event. And so yeah. And I've got quite a few clones fighting now. As you yeah, can I can say. see. So this, this is the, this um, is the main idea of the mesmer. Yeah. Assume. And, and what I just did there is, see, I've got these abilities on F1 and F2. Then that's the default key ones for them. And I'll un you unlock a few more later. And this is one of the main class features of the mesmer. It's that when you summon clones, you can then um, detonate them for various effects. You can either just use them for damage, or various crowd controlling or debuffing effects from um, shattering your illusions. Oh cool, I see next to your F1 and F2 thing that you've got little circle. These, how many clones These you've got now? Yeah, that's, that, them circles are how many clones are currently active. As you can see, that event just ended. We actually failed it though. All the guards in the town died. I got a contribution level gold, as you see that gold medal up there, that's that's because I was contributing to the fight. If you don't contribute quite as much, you might get silver or bronze, and you get slightly lesser rewards. Um, so you still get a reward even though you fail because you fight. You still fight. get a reward even though you fail, but, but the reward is, is, is lesser, uh, yeah. like I said. But, now what, we, what we're seeing now, however, is um, the chain events system, which is that even though we failed that previous task, what has now happened is the undead have taken over this area. Oh, I had quite a bit of lag there, so I'm just going to skip forward towards the end of this event. But what's essentially happened is, because the undead were invading, we failed to defend. They are now in control of the area, and so we're forcing them back out. And you can capture it back. And we can capture it back. So there's a push so and pull as, as you can weird. see, there are uh, a lot of players around now. There weren't so many when I arrived, but now that there are a lot, we have enough people that we can fight off these undead now, and um, and it's back to yours. It's your side, and, it, and it's back, and it, oh, yeah, and, and we can, and we will now control this. It's um, so, so there's interesting ways that events chain together that way. I mean, there, there are somewhere if you quite often if you fail an event, there'll be another event in order to correct what you failed, or, or you know something along those lines. And there we go. We're successful in that event. So now this place is open back up. And There's a lot of people there now. It's interesting how many people came together just to take back. This and I mean, point. the other interesting thing is, this this person that I came to help, and you can see that heart. That heart is now filled where it was just an outline before, because I fight a uh, in amongst completing the event, that um, many of them things we were killing counted towards the general helping for the task. Oh, so and so, so she likes you now, and she gives you. So she'll like now. So she, so I get bonuses from her from. Com uh, from completing that task, I also get um, access to a new vendor, which is this. I'm just going to buy a little accessory there from this vendor, and that's pretty much it. That looks. And that's um, 
Well, that that looked really cool. We're gonna we're gonna look at a bit more Silvari footage in our videos, and we've got an in, we're planning to look at some of the Azura starting area as well because that's the other race that's become available in this beta weekend. Yeah, absolutely. We we hope you enjoyed that video, and if there's anything you want to see that we haven't shown, please drop us a comment, and we'll try and get some footage of it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're definitely we're gonna have some more. Like he says, we're gonna have some more Silvari footage up very soon. Anyway, we've got some other types of events, some larger events. Um, I've got uh, demonstrations. Obviously, I was using the scepter all through that. There, I've got some footage of using different weapon types, so learning different skills cool. and a bit of the other skills that you learn, the non-weapon based skills. Um, so we'll we'll be seeing that all in in the next video. Oh, thank you very much. If right. you like this video, please like, favourite and subscribe. It really does help. Yeah. And see you next time. Bye. <laughs>